Welcome back to another edition of Green is Good. And we're so honored to have with us today our friend who happens to be the founder and CEO of One Drop Interactive and also the co-founder of Woman in Green Forum, which we are at today. Welcome back to Green is Good, Jamie Knack. Thank you so much, Sean. And thank you for all of your support over the last six years. Oh, of course. Of course. And we, we love you, Jamie, because you're just doing all the great work traveling the world on climate change with uh, Vice President Al Gore and all the great work you do at One Drop Interactive. And for people who want to find you, Jamie, they can either go to womanandgreenforum.com. That's womanandgreenforum.com. Or at your business where you're the CEO and founder, onedropinteractive.com. One dropinteractive.com. Talk about today and the big success that you've had. We've, we've interviewed all these amazing people here today, thanks to you. They're, these are just leaders in every sector. How, how was today in terms of what your vision was going to be having it up here in the beautiful Santa Monica, I mean, Santa Monica up in the, in the, uh, in the, in the mountains of Los Angeles up here at Tree People. How did, how did it go? It's been fantastic. I couldn't be more humbled and more proud of, of my team and of the advisory board and of all of our partners who have helped support us and to get us through these last six years to where we are today. We really push ourselves to do something different every year, both on both thematically and then also just on creating a space and an environment for the attendees to thrive. So finding Tree People as our, as our new host venue and as a partner here, not only does it allow us to really enjoy an indoor-outdoor event, um, but I think you know being able to highlight one of the top environmental nonprofit organizations both here locally and in the nation and be able to showcase them to our guests, I think has been a real treat. Yeah. Um, how about curating today's event? How did you come up with all these cool panels and speakers and how's it gone to, to your vision? Yeah, so the theme, the overarching theme is tomorrow by design. And what we've really focused on is really is seeing who are the leaders today that are finding solutions, both in the tech world and the clean tech world and the policy space and the education space that are going to shape what tomorrow looks like. So, you know, you've seen this little Unicub Honda's mobility device oh, so cool. first time in the US that people are able to ride it oh, um, wow. so you know we're, we're showing the the, the the what's coming what the future will hold um, but we're also having leaders connect and talk about ways of finding solutions together so we have virtual reality meets holograms um, we have the US meets Mexico so we really want to find a way to catalyze those conversations here so that we can grow together and and as a community support each other's initiatives is this the biggest woman in green forum event you've ever had yet yeah. Um, you know, we, we did max out. We sold out. So okay. we had to put a cap. We've never done that before, wow. which is fantastic. We also have attendees traveling from Uruguay, Indonesia, Mexico um, here today. So it's, it's really, really great just to see the enthusiastic support of the event. Talk a little bit about the company that you've, you're the CEO and founder of, One Drop Interactive. What do you do there? Um, you know, what was your vision there? You are really one of the cutting edge leaders of not only um, uh, the young woman generation, but really the lean in generation. How is it working to your plan and to your vision? Yeah, so One Drop, the, I'll talk about the name first. So yeah. we named it One Drop Interactive with the idea that you educate and engage one employer, one person around sustainability. And it has this ripple effect across their company. And then they take that, that education and knowledge home. So across the community and then ideally across the globe. We really wanted to focus on how individual behavior change and shift in thinking can then help if impact policy decisions um, and, and you know, the way that companies behave and operate from the inside out. How's it been going? I mean, you know, you know uh, I know you have a lot of great technology tools that you've created. How has been the evolution of your company? I mean, you're happy with how it's moving against your vision. Yeah, it's been fantastic. And there are always surprises and some that just happen to work in your favor along the way. So, you know, we really have focused on the corporate, the large corporate right. market. But um, Manisha Patel, who's here from the White House um, Council on Environmental Quality today, talked a lot about President Obama's executive order, which was issued in March of this year. And that caused called for every federal agency to name a chief sustainability officer. And then one of the things that those people are, are in charge of is environmental education for employees. So that's for federal employees. So we've already presented one drop to the White House several times and to the person who's in charge of this education and training component. And so we've, we've realized that you know the, the, the federal government might become the, the, the unicorn or the, the client that we weren't even predicting. 
That's so interesting. Um, your business is in Santa Monica, but you travel the world. Yeah. And so your clients are based mostly in the United States, or are you get actually getting also clients outside of the United States now? We do both. So we have had projects in Uruguay and Argentina. So we have um, traveled down there quite a bit, um, building out sustainable communities in Ur- in, on the coast in Uruguay. Um, because of our travel with some of our, our, our clients here in the U.S., we've, in the last 12 months, done work in India, Brazil, South Africa, and Australia. So we do get a, get around. We're, we're the only wow. firm in the U.S. that um, has translated our sustainability standards in 13 languages, including Icelandic, Urdu, Korean, Mandarin. Um, and we also are the only firm in the U.S. Um, on the consulting side that's uh, implemented sustainability for events on all seven continents. Unreal. Um, I know that one of your the most important topics and near and dear to your heart and passion is climate change. Yep. And you travel the world with Vice President Gore advocating and being a great evangelist on this important issue. Why is 2015 almost a watershed year for this critical issue that we need to move faster on with what's coming up in Paris? Um, what, what do you feel is about to happen and how can our listeners get more involved to help effectuate change? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think all eyes and it's called the, the road to Paris, you know, in December, the yeah. cop talks, all eyes are looking to, to Paris to really with, with hope and a, a glimmer of hope in our eyes, looking yeah. for a, a global climate agreement to be reached. And I think a lot of the work that I do internationally with Mr. Gorn, with his organization, the climate reality project is to really educate and create a, a groundswell of support from around the, the world of, of citizens who are motivated to educate and engage their communities. So the Climate Reality Project is, um, is Mr. Gore's vision to really create climate leaders who are educated and knowledgeable and then can also help impact and, and affect policy changes as well. So there are trainings held throughout the world. The next one is coming up in Miami in September. Um, and the Climate Reality um, the website has trainings listed and, and anyone can go go and apply to sign up if it's something they're passionate about. And that just means they're committing to get to take three days out of their schedule to get educated with Mr. Gore for one day. And then they go back to their community and start um, rolling out trainings and sessions where they can educate schools and policymakers and, and they, they, they roll out their commitment locally. Wow. Um, what's the next evolution for Women in Green Forum? Yeah, so we get questions every year about regional events. So we've had yeah. interest from um, the East Coast. We did do a West Coast, East Coast event a couple years back um, in D.C. and then L.A. We get in, we have a lot of interest coming from Texas um, for a Texas chapter, or and, wow. and they are attending and here again today. Wow. Um, and then we've gotten interest from other parts of the world, so Argentina, mm. um, India. And so we definitely want to support these the regional activities and are interested in, in finding local partners to help co-create and develop those as well. We, we we see that there, we've, we've tapped into something. There's a definite need for this type of community space, and we'd love to support its growth. We have young women around the world that listen to our show, and you've found some f- magical convergence of both being a woman entrepreneur for profit, but also, and not only doing good with that company, with One Drop Interactive, but also creating Women in Green Forum which is really a mission-based, uh, what kind of advice can you give to, your, to the listeners, our listeners around the world that are now trying to pick their path, whether educationally speaking, professionally speaking, or otherwise? What's, what's, in, what's in store for the young women out there that are really going to be the next group of change agents? Yeah. I mean, I think you really have to, I know everyone says, you know, figure out what you're passionate about. And I think when you're young, it's, it can be hard because you can either be passionate about a lot of things or, or a couple of things. And it's hard to know if those are the right career choices at that time. Yeah. And what I would say is I, and my path was no, it was not direct. It, it didn't lead straight to environment either. Yeah. Um, I always definitely pursued different things from music and arts and culture that I was passionate about. But I think what, what as long as you both follow things that you're passionate about and uh, attach yourself 
yourself. And when I say attach, I mean via internships, via volunteer assignments, via going to events and lectures with people who you admire and people who are working in the space that you think you want to be in. Because I think the, the, the more that you can learn about what their day-to-day life is like and what their, what, what their career path has been like, the more that you can see if it's something that might be a fit for you. I'm a huge believer in internships. So we've actually hired, um, I, I counted the other day, we've hired six of our former, who, who started out as interns. Wow. Um, my, my employee number one was an in, a, a senior in college intern. We hired her the day she graduated full time and she's been promoted up the ladder ever since. So I think, you know, it, I would much rather see someone who's dedicated and has a ton of experience from, from interning or diving in um, than just, just um, focusing on the, the academic route. So the more that you can dive in and get experience early on, the better. A lot of young women see you though as an inspiration. Who inspires you? Who are some of your heroes that continue to inspire you to keep pushing you to be the best that you can be in both what you've done here at Women in Green Forum and also One Drop Interactive? Yeah, I think I find inspiration from different ways. So one, I would say, is I read a lot. Um, I, I, I love books that are, are involved about how we can both maximize our productivity and maximize our happiness and, and overall wellness in life. So yeah. it can be anything from like the book, The Power of Habit, to uh, The Power of a Positive No, which is a Harvard negotiations book, but ways of adding to your personal toolkit so that you can both find balance and, and find success, right? Um, I also think that in terms of people who inspire me, I've been really um, honored to be part of a group called the Young Global Leaders of the World Economic Forum. I just returned from a week in Geneva with this group. Wow. And I think one of the things that, that happens when you're both labeled and thrown into these groups early on, you're connected with p- people. In this case, it's young, younger um, leaders from around the world who are all very passionate about different things. So I'm, you know, I'm, I might be the one in the environment, but there's someone who's very passionate about tech or vehicles or that type of thing. And so when you connect and align yourself with others who are super passionate and pushing the envelope in their industries, I think it helps you, um, it pushes yourself to try to get up to that level and to continue to push further. How far, talking of pushing further, how far can you grow one drop interactive where is where is the ceiling there and where are you uh, in terms of the evolution of one drop interactive yeah so our idea is that it really becomes the standard for education around sustainability for employees so similar to how um, on a on a kind of higher level six sigma became the standard for management consulting and efficiency and organizational um, right. operations we see one drop as something that can be applied to every employee across the board it's not just to the Six Sigma type people. It's every employee across the board so that we can raise everyone's knowledge on energy, water, recycling, et cetera. And then, we, and then, and then the, the overall populace has a better understanding of how we can reduce our impact on the environment. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Jamie, any final words? This is your event. Uh, we're just honored to be here. We want to keep coming to these events and covering all the great uh, thought leaders that you bring together. Um, any final thoughts by you? Um, the only other thing I would say is we're always open to new ideas. So I know your show reaches millions of people online and there are no borders online. So if anyone has any ideas about topics or speakers or ways of growing the forum community online, we would love to hear them. Please feel free to reach out to us, the website womenandgreenforum.com and our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we'd be happy to connect with you. We're, we're all about connecting and continuing to build the community. Jamie Knack, she's the founder and CEO also of One Drop Interactive. You can find her at OneDropInteractive.com, OneDropInteractive.com. Jamie, again, you're always an inspiration when you come on this show. You always make the world a better place and are truly living proof that green is good. We've got Jennifer Berthelot Jelovic with us. She's the president and CEO of Sustain Pro. Welcome to Green is Good. Thank you. You know, Sustain Pro stands for Sustainable Production, and your website is sustainpro.org. But before we get talking about sustain production, talk a little bit about 
what you're doing. Great. You know, your journey leading up to founding sustainable production. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I was working for an owner and developer and we were building an airplane hangar in Burbank, California. And they essentially said, okay, it's your job to make it the most sustainable aviation facility. It needs to be lead platinum. And I said, what is lead? Why does it need to be platinum? And how did this become my job? And luckily for me, it did become my job because it ended up being my passion. So I got the opportunity to work with some of the greatest experts in sustainability from around the world uh, to mentor me as we were building Hangar 25 in Burbank. And it became the greenest aviation facility in the world. And how many years ago was that? That was uh, in the mid-2000s, so around 2006 to 2008, yeah. Now, is that just for your clients' planes or was it for... It was. It was a private aviation facility, but what was so incredible about it was the model that could be then taken out from it because we created enough uh, solar power that we were able to power homes in Burbank and get money back from Burbank Water and Power such that it wasn't using energy. It was actually producing more, and the planes were plugged in during the day, so they weren't burning jet A fuel. They were actually plugged in using solar for the planes to run during the day as well. Wow. So you did that project. And what were you doing before that? Uh, Before that, (laughs) I was working in entertainment uh, and movies and music. We had a movie production company and a music label. And then we were doing development and real estate and that kind of stuff on the side. Were you then dabbling at all in sustainability and green? Or was this the big epiphany and big green moment in your life where you started thinking more and more about it? Well, I was a tree-hugging hippie since birth. I mean, it was just (laughs) like I didn't realize it. Like in college, this is so embarrassing. But like I threw the food out the window because my philosophy was like, that's what I knew composting. Well, it'll go back into the earth. The animals will eat it. Like I had no concept at that point. Like there was something called composting. So I was doing it all along and just didn't know. I've been a vegetarian for 24 years since, you know, I was 14. So, you know, when you look at it, I was doing it all along, but uh, working for this specific um, company, the owner was a huge advocate for the environment and sustainability. So we were working on it before that project. And that's how we, he had decided that that project was going to be sustainable. So after that project, then you then, went on to they opened a general contracting firm because they realized everyone wanted to charge them so much more for sustainability but we figured out you could do it for uh, traditional construction costs so I helped them with the opening of the the construction company and I was their director of sustainability over there for about four years at the construction company before they came to me and said we're holding you back people want your services uh, as a sustainability consultant and so I went on on my own and started a sustainable production also known as ASAP and uh, have been running with that ever since. So Sustainable Production is your company. It is. And your website is www.sustainpro.org. Correct. So when did you start that company? March of 2012. And so talk a little bit about the journey. A, as a woman entrepreneur, since we're here at the Woman in Green <laughs> Forum, here yes. at the Tree People in Coldwater Canyon Park, as a woman entrepreneur starting your own business, And what's the journey been like the last three, three and a half years? Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a woman, I'm a mom, so I have two little ones. So for me, starting my own business was actually, um, amazing. It's been such an incredible journey because it gives me the flexibility so that I can volunteer at my kid's school or start a garden at their school and and really be involved and uh, allows me to do what I love. So I get to choose my projects and my clients and work on things that really excite me and that I'm passionate about so that, you know, my career and and my life kind of just blend together because I'm doing what I love and I love what I'm doing. You know, when people talk about LEED certified, L-E-E-D, what does that really mean? And how big has LEED really become during this whole green slash sustainability revolution? I started LEED, um, you know, like I said, back in the the early 2000s and nobody knew what it meant. They'd say, oh, LEEDs, isn't that a city in in England? Or, (laughs) oh, LEEDs, like you mean the mattress people? And and we're like, no, LEED, no S at the end. And um, so LEED is a rating system. It essentially tells you how healthy the building is for the planet, how much energy it's using, how much water. In the beginning, you know, there wasn't a lot of LEED. And now it's hard to look around and not find a LEED building close to where you are. So the building we're in right now here uh, up at Tree People's Lead Platinum, for instance, that means it's the most uh, highest rating, the most sustainable that it could be within that that level of uh, certification. So people come to you now and they want to green their building or green from the when they're building from the ground up or do they take already an existing building and want to make it green after it's already been built in existing 30, 40 years? 
Well, the answer is all of the above. <laughs> so the great thing about sustainability and LEED is we absolutely have to look at the existing building stock because there's so much of it. And quite frankly, that was the stuff that was designed pre-codes uh, and, and things guiding us to make sure that they're sustainable. So the existing building stock is extremely important. And then we're seeing that the majority of new construction going up um, is doing LEED, LEED certification. But we also have codes here in the state of California or in the cities, for instance, like New York, that that uh, help design the buildings and, and mandate that they're being built sustainably as well. What city, you know, you because this this is your life now, and this is your <laughs> business, what city is leading the way with regards to green building and LEED certified buildings? Is it LA? Is it New York? Is it some other city? What's going on with okay, that? Okay, I should know this because I read these updates yeah. and I know I just yeah. read it. And, um, you know... I know that Ohio used to lead in green schools, which no means kidding. a lot to me because I'm from Ohio. Oh. Um, so I thought that that was really awesome that the green schools were leading in Ohio. And I do not know the answer to that. But is this, <laughs> but is this a trend, though, now that is, has really come upon us in the United States and that there's... Uh, a lot of Jennifers now around the United States greening yes. offices, greening the living space of where we work, which is really our living space. We're there, there more more than we're almost in our homes. So getting them green and LEED certified is really important for our health and wellness, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we spend about 90% of our time indoors. And when you think about that, wow. you know, where you're at matters. It's really going to impact your health and well-being. So something we're seeing in addition to LEED is well certification. And so the way that LEED looks at how healthy the building is for the planet, the well certification looks at how healthy the building is for the people in that building and they work together, LEED and WELL. Talk a little bit about WELL. If LEED has to do with how the building's built and designed, Talk a little bit about what WELL can bring to anybody's office that wants to get WELL certification. Sure. So what's great about WELL is it complements LEED. So it looks at the built environment, but only about 30% of that. And that overlaps with LEED, looking at air quality, daylighting, things of that nature. But what WELL does then is it takes it a step further and it looks at the behavior and operations. And so it's looking at um, how people can live or work or learn in a space such that it improves that productivity, that learning, um, you're sleeping, whatever it is in that space that you're doing. And uh, they've partnered with people like the Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, Columbia School of Innovation. And with those partners, they've taken the medical research, the scientific research, and then the built environment research and put them together so that they're able to look at the features that can be implemented on a building such that you have a healthier and more productive space. So everything from the cleanliness of the desks that we sit at to the air that we breathe to the drinking water that we drink in our office space, everything's affected really when you do when you bring the well well program in combination with lead. Exactly. And you can do well without lead. So we're seeing some do lead, some do well and some do both. So it's it's wow. fabulous. Yeah. Wow. You know, talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. What's been <laughs> what's worked out the way you wanted, Jennifer? And what's been very different than you ever thought it would be? Wow. So when I started my company, I, I had been at, you know, my previous employer for 10 years. Uh, so I, that was my identity. Going out, I really had no idea what my company was going to look like. Just that I wanted to change the world. I wanted it to be sustainable. I wanted to leave it for my kids and my grandkids, you know, a better, healthier place. And so, you know, I saw myself doing lead and then I started another company. And so I have another company, Earth and Associates. And at Earth and Associates, um, we do lead and well certification, but we take it a step further. So we actually design cities and buildings um, and, and whole communities such that um, we're making the entire community sustainable and healthy as well. So oh. I look at it at both levels, the macro level of like single buildings with ASAP, and then with Earth and Associates, I take it with my design team and my engineers and my architects, and we can actually do a full city to take it to that next level. So you open your doors. Did you open <laughs> an office or open out of your house? When you out of the house. Out I was, of the house. I was determined not to have an office. Wow. And so now, what's what does it look like? You know, three and a half years later. Still out of the house. Still out of the house. Yeah, like, <laughs> I am, yes. I have a pool house, so I have like extra space right. and office, you know. Right. To, but um, yeah, there's something to me that's just organic and, you it's know. so nice. Yeah. And also keeps you connected then with your family and the kids and everything else. Yeah. And, um, and it cuts down on your commute. Yeah, well, and that's it. <laughs> I, you know, like quality of life and balance. Yeah. That's what's really important. And I find being a woman, you know, yep. owning my own companies, running nonprofits, being a mom, I'm trying to find 
that balance and my own health and well-being, it's really important to not be commuting for an hour a day. And so has it gotten bigger than you thought it would be or is it growing the way you want it? Or talk a little bit about like where where things are matching up with your expectations and where they're not really. Yeah, well, you know, at, at first I was like, it's just going to be me. And then that didn't work. And so <laughs> then I started bringing people in and then I started bringing a lot of people in to manage. And at a certain point I said, okay, this is too fast. I need to slow down. And um, so for me, I, I kind of just let the ebbs and flows come as um, the work does. Uh, organically really I don't have any expectations for me like I want to make a living and make a difference and so whatever clients that come to me I'll just keep employing people to keep those people working and making a difference but um, it's not about an ego it's not about like an endpoint other than the more change and the, the more sustainable healthy buildings we have then the more successful I am. Has the velocity picked up year after year? Are more developers and more building owners slash managers coming to you more than ever before compared to 2012 and 15 and 16 and what you're seeing in your pipeline? Are more people interested in this than ever before? Well, interestingly enough, with the lead market, uh, it's flooded with consultants in Los uh, Angeles. So okay. the owners know how to do it themselves. They have someone in-house that does it here. The architects know how to do it. The engineers know how to do it. Okay. The general contractors know how to do it. Um, and then you have all the individual consultants as well. So, um, yes, the market is absolutely doing lead at a, an, an increasing volume. Um, that's not flooding my doors, but what is is the well standard. So being the first well AP um, in on the West Coast and working on all the, the first projects for the last three years, um, the well standard is definitely something that's flooding my market and, and causing my business to really pick up and Well, and because be you've differentiated yourself. Absolutely. Wow. Is, is there, are there other well... Uh, specialists across the nation now? Um, so there were only five of us originally, wow. um, and now they are slowly rolling out well APs um, as they do specified trainings, and um, there'll be more, and then they'll create the exam in the next year so that there'll be more well APs. But um, right now, I'm the one that's they had a great deal of experience from working on all the pilots and I was a peer reviewer for um, the standard and um, so it's been really exciting to be at the forefront and watch it from you know the very very infancy of, of creating yeah. it and writing it to now actually implementing the standard and the pilots you know um, give a little outlook on the next five or ten years you're still very young um, <laughs> sustainable production obviously is doing well yeah um, where, where, what's next for you in line in terms of the evolution of your business as a woman entrepreneur? Got it. Yeah. So um, I actually start, started out in social work before I fell into entertainment. So I've taken the most random journey um, that's led me right where I was supposed to be. Right. I, I joke I've gotten back to my social work roots, but I'm just dealing with it like on the other side as opposed to the people side. Right. Um, so for me, uh, I really see that, you know, ASAP is going to keep doing lead and well certification and really um, look at that built environment. I see Earth and Associates will continue to start doing even larger projects around the world. And then for myself, um, I really want to get back to my humanitarian work, like, you know, on the ground in other countries, like making a difference in people's lives. How old are your children? They're five and a half and almost eight. And they're boys or girls? Both boys. Both boys. Okay. <laughs> yes. So now, Jennifer, you're part of really, you know, sort of the tipping point generation, this whole lean in. Has, has really happened since you started your company. Yeah. We have a lot of young ladies around the world because our, our show is listened to not only in the United States but around the world that email us about Lean In and how they want to be the next Jennifer. What advice can you give to the young girls and young women of the world that are thinking, well, I could either go take this path and go work for somebody or I could really start my own business? I'm not going to say it's easy starting your own business. It's not. It's a lot of work and you have to know how to do a lot of things, business and marketing and what you're good at. But what I would say is that if it's what you want to do, you're capable and you'll if you build a team around you that knows what they're doing. And I'd say that's probably one of the things I could have done better starting is I thought I could do it all on my own. Right. Um, and there could have been team members that had I brought in at the beginning. It yeah. might have made my, my process a little easier. Yeah. Um, but what I get for myself is that like... I get to do what I love every day and um, it might be harder than just going and collecting a paycheck, but the reward on the other side for me and my kids and just the life I get to live is so worth it that um, I would encourage any young woman out there to just believe in herself and surround herself with people that support her and get what she's up to in life and then go for it. 
could you ever go back and work for anybody after this? No. It's like, it's so funny because people ask me that all the time. And I have those days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I'm like, are you kidding? What? Wait, like, you couldn't do that. Like, this is so just, nice. yeah. Good for you. Well, we wish you continued success. Um, the name of uh, Jennifer Berthelot Jelovic's company is Sustainable Production. You can find her at www.sustainpro.org. Jennifer, you're doing wonderful work. We're so thankful you joined us today here at the Women in Green Forum at Tree People in Los <laughs> Angeles. You are truly living proof that green is good. 